I need to make another video. Pardon me for the poor lighting. Um, I'm in the part of the house where I store my potatoes and I'm sprouting, de-sprouting potatoes again. And uh, a thought came to me. <sighs> How do I begin this? It's about God and, and the mental image of God that we hold in our mind. We, when we hear the word God, we think of a being that is omnipotent, omnipresent, all powerful and perfect. And this mental image of God that we hold has us so disconnected from reality. It has us disconnected from one another. And it has, it perpetuates our criticism and judgment of one another because we're judging everything against the mental image of this all-powerful, all-perfect God, and we judge creation as imperfect. And so our mind, through this judgment and through this image of a separated, omnipresent, omnipowerful, omnipotent, perfect God, um, creates the duality that we have um, fallen into and that has kept us separated from God. And one could say that the mission of Jesus was to demonstrate to us that God is a man in a flesh body. Reminds me of that song. I, I can't remember the name of the artist, but the song goes like this. What if God is one of us, just a slop like one of us, riding on the bus every day. Um, that was the idea of the Jesus story. To bring down this notion of this distant, all-powerful, perfect God, and to bring it to the human level through the character of Jesus, the archetype of Jesus. We were intended to learn and understand that God can show up in a weak and vulnerable creation like a human baby like a man that died on the cross you see but we have not taken on we've not caught on to the truth of that that God appeared as a vulnerable human that is subject to to dying. But not only was this true of Jesus, it was meant to be true of each one of us. It was meant to close the gap, the distance that our mind has created between us, creation, and God, when we use the phrase of creator and creation that comes from the mind of separateness. And when we hold this mental image of a perfect God and we judge creation as imperfect, because of that mental image, we treat, we mistreat each other, we judge each other. We are unkind and disrespectful to each other because we haven't transferred the image of Jesus 
the human man, the human God-man, and applied it to every one of us. Only when we do that can God embody humanity in love instead of judgment. Only when we see the connection that God is expressing itself through the vulnerability of, human, of humanity, then we can start to honor one another as we honor God now. But if we hold God as the perfect, all-powerful being at a distance, we will never have the respect and love for an imperfect creation for you and me. Do you see what I'm saying? God, or the Word, became flesh to break down the illusion of this all-powerful spirit in the cosmos. God is looking back at you when you look in the mirror in the morning. That is God. And that is true of every human being. So, will you honor the God that is looking back at you through the eyes of your neighbor? Will you honor your neighbor as you honor God? That was the truth that Jesus tried to bring into the earth. But the earth wasn't ready. The world wasn't ready for it then. And for many it's not ready now. But the light is shining brightly and this message is going forward through many voices, including mine. You and I are God in the flesh. Let's honor one another in the same way that we honor the God image that our mind has created.